Hi everybody, this is Patty. Today I'm here with a Cut at Home Design Team Share and I'm going to show you how to make a really simple accordion mini that's the same size as what an A2 card would be, approximately. You, you, I'm going to be using the uh, children's hour and I think this is going to be a two-parter. I'll do it um, this week and then uh, the first part of next week I'll have the finish up of this. So I'm going to be using the Graphic 45 Children's Hour. If you have not seen this, oh my word, this is just the most gorgeous paper. And I have it in the 8x8, the 12x12. 12 12. This is so pretty. And um, the 6x6 six six patterns and solids. I love these 6x6 six six ones. Uh, you can also get another 12x12 12 12 pack that is the blank calendar months. Now, what I've used is I have just used craft paper in a regular uh, leather size, 11.5 um, by 8.5. I've cut them in half, just like you would do for a regular A2 size card, at 5.5. And, and then I scored them. There's my one here. Not that one. Uh -huh, where did you go? Oh, here it is. Then I scored them in half, just like you would if you were going to make a card like this. And then on two of them, I took them and scored them at the four and the quarter. And then I scored every eighth of an inch for a half an inch. Let me move that way in so you can see what I'm telling you. Okay. We have our standard A2 size. We've scored it at four and a quarter. Let me turn it over here. Four and a quarter. And then I did it at um, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths. So that you are going to have like a little accordion on the side. That will help your, um, your little tiny mini adjust. Oops, don't want you to see too much of my dirty desk here. Um, it will give it some flexibility. And you can see it's cattywampus here on the front, but that's okay. We're going to fix that. So the next thing you're going to do is we're going to be gluing these two together. And it's going to create the flap for our book. And I'm going to glue them right here where your first score mark is, just on the inside of that, on both sides. In fact, let's just do that right now. I'm going to use wet glue, you could use uh, ATG, you could use double sided tape, whatever you want, but for the purpose of expediency, I'm going to use wet glue. Okay, so you've got your accordions on both sides. You're going to line it up right on the inside of your score marks, right like that. Make sure that your bottom down here is flush. There we go. There we go. See? Now this is the outside of our little book. Now we want our accordion piece that's going to go inside. And I wanted six flaps so that I could have one for each day or each month and have a little book with 12 pictures taken every month. So I'm going to glue my bottom piece right to the inside here and then you'll see it's going to accordion out this way. Now this is very very simple to do. Remember we cut our full size sheet. Oh, I just dropped it somewhere. Oh here it is. Just hold on one second. It fell on the floor. We cut our, our regular standard size sheet. We cut it in half so we have two. We scored it in half. And then all we're going to do is we're going to glue one to the other so that when it opens, you have double thickness through here. That's going to give a lot of stability to this little book as it's opened and closed. So I'm going to glue this last page together here, like this. Very simple. Now, slide it underneath. Line it up with your score marks. Make sure that your bottom and top are flush. 
and fold it over. There we go. There we are. And now we have all of our accordion. It's hard to show you here, but we have our accordion and it's double thickness throughout. And we're going to attach it to our base. I think I'm going to use score tape for that just because I want a really good strong bond because it's going to be folded and unfolded a lot. But if you have some heavy duty tape or um, some liquid tape you like, whatever you prefer, you just want to make sure that your bond here is going to be exceedingly strong because this is the part that's going to get the most wear and tear. Okay, if you're going to be using tape like I'm using here, you want to have your bone folded around and you want to burnish it so that you've got it flush with that paper all along. And then remove the backing and there's a little spot you can see right there that the tape missed in that corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right down here where there is any tape and right over here with a little bit of glue and right there as well. And now we're going to line it up right there with our score marks inside of the score marks. Oops, oops. And inside of the score marks. Right like that. Okay, now we have a cute little book. Is that not nifty? Look at there. So, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. 13 places plus our outer flaps that we can see you've got it scored. So I'll be back in just a minute. I'll show you how we're going to do the ties and uh, a magnet closure. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. I want to have a magnetic closure here on the front. And what I use are these round, oops, sticking to the tape there, these round little discs. These are metal. I buy them at Home Depot. I had to order mine. They're called tin roofing caps. Now mine are a little bit larger. Mine are about two and three quarters inch across. Uh, they come one and a half, two, but I couldn't, I couldn't find a smaller size and that's okay because you can, let me see if I have one here, you can um, cut them. I'm trying to tell you about everything everything sticking together here and I can't find it so when you have magnets say magnetize to it anyway you can cut them cut them apart and make them smaller I want the whole thing today and then I'm going to use the magnetic discs these are basic gray you can buy them at uh, joanne.com online and um, Amazon has them I use these a lot and I'm going to use three of them and what I do is I take my sticky back tape I put my magnets on it. I lay them down where I want them, like this and like this, because I, I want a good bond here. And now I simply close my top over my bottom, like this, press down, because now we're transferring that tape to the inside. So here are my magnets, and when I cover this with um, paper, all of that is going to disappear and have double-sided tape between them underneath here and see now I have a super strong magnetic hole. You could also if you wanted to run um, ribbon, run your ribbon nail uh, across the back, tape it to the back, leave it loose on the sides and then when you cover your paper that will attach it to it. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that. Okay I'll be back and we'll cover a couple of pages and then we'll leave the rest for next week. Bye everybody. Okay, I'm back again. If you want to make yours just like mine, every page is going to have a tag that slips behind the mat of the month. And every page in the 8x8 book, the monthly page, has one of these with a little journaling spot. That's what I'm going to use. So you want to cut your paper in half to the four and a quarter. 
and then I made my mats two and let's see this is a one two three four five six seven eight two and fifteen sixteenths but you know make it however you want that is just the right size to have a nice little border behind that I'm gonna punch a hole at the top and put a tag on or a um, a ribbon on each one so that it can be above let me show you above right in here so if you want to do all those and then I'll be back with the next step I'm also cutting each one of the months this page completely apart so I have all these little things to play with and I'm just gonna put them in envelopes January through December okay see you on the next round well I was gonna do this in two parts and then after I got putting it together I just couldn't stop so I think I'm gonna do the whole thing and show it to you but I wanted to do two pages with you and I'm down to December December is the last page of course and the way the book was made I have two spots for December so I cut my 8 by 8 inch pad in half so this one is just a tag smaller than what the other pages are but that's okay no one's going to notice it and I put tape around the bottom a wide tape on the bottom making sure that when I slide my pocket into here or my tag into here there will be room for it to maneuver around now I'm only going to put a pocket on one side so I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape across the top of the other side since this is a two page spread and somewhere I have my little oh there it is my little doodad thing here to rip this off. So let's go ahead and put this down. On this side I'm just going to do the tape. I'm not doing anything else. Just going to adhere it down with the tape. On each one of these mats I took one of the distress inks and inked the edges. This one I used Festive Berry on it because it's just the perfect color tones. So this one is not going to have a pocket at the top so I'm just putting it directly to the paper. Now this one I want to leave this section open and what I do and I've showed you this before is I'm going to remove the tape like this and then I'm going to put a very thin bead of liquid glue just to the inside of the tape. The reason I do this is when you are sliding a mat or a tag down into a pocket that has the double side tape on it. If any of that tape hasn't adhered, your, your mat or your tag is going to stick to it. So now I just want to line it up because as you can see I just cut the paper so it, it flows from one side to the other here. See December and the little girl and whatever. Okay, now let's just leave that alone for a minute and let it glue while I do the rest of it. This is one of the little cut parts from the paper and what I did after I was on camera I cut apart each month and I put it in a little envelope so I could keep it separate while I was putting my stuff together and then I cut my mats and as you can see I've cut up all of the pages in this 8x8 book but if you wanted to make this I hope you guys aren't hearing that the lawn people are hearing it's right on my front door blowing leaves it's annoying but bear with me if you can hear it too this is an 8x8 paper pad and I did cut up them all but looky here I don't know if you can see this but there's lots of bits and pieces these will all make wonderful cards okay so I took for my December one of the um, cut apart pieces out of that paper and I trimmed around the Santa and the little kids and I backed it with the brown craft because that's what I used in the book. Again, I'm only putting score tape on the two places like this and I'm going to make sure my tape is to the inside and I'm going to run a bead of liquid glue right along the side of that tape and I just like to kind of push it down with my finger. This one is going to go right in this corner like this. Make sure that, well, I guess it's going to be a little above the mat because that's the way it or Yes, but that's okay. I'm going to let that dry a bit before I put my other mat in it. Now the other one, over here I have my December. 
which I put this on each one of the pages. And from this little piece, I took this, which is the little girl and the cat, and she's got um, mistletoe in her hand. I fussy cut them out and backed them on the brown cardstock. I have a piece of tape here. I'm going to remove the tape. And this, well, maybe I'm going to remove the tape. There we go. This is going to sit right here on the top of the December. Ooh, let's see. Right like that. And as you can see, I've inked all the papers with the festive berry as well. I have tape on the side and tape across the bottom. Again, because I'm going to, and here, any time that I have two pieces together like this, or if I have a brag sticking in it, I always cover it with a piece of scotch tape. And the reason I do that is, oh my goodness, I wish he would get done in front of my yard. Um, the reason I do this is so that, let me just take a pair of scissors and snip that. I don't want it showing from the other side. Is that when you put something behind this, then you're not going to have any bit, anything snagging. And I did the same thing. I'll show you on some brags that I used, and I put, put a piece of scotch tape over them. So now I've got the tape free and I again am just going to put a small line of glue between the tape and where the mat is going to be and this is going to adhere on the other side straight across like that and those are my two things for December I only have one tag for the top and it's this one and I did the uh, seam binding with the festive berry, and that's what I've done to all of them. Punch my hole. It's uh, backed with the um, craft. And you know, because I have this festive berry on everything else, I think I'm just going to run a little bit of festive berry just around the edges here to kind of tie it, tie it together. And that's going to slide right in here where we left the pocket. I did try to alter or alternate my tags to make sure they weren't all in the same spot. And now we have room for the map to go in here, and we have another one, and the map to go in here. So there we are. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, shall I flip through this book real quick? No, I think I'll go and do the outside, and then I'll come back, and I'll leave this as a surprise. But so far, I took my magnets off because... They just weren't lining up quite right because, as you can see, my book is a lot wider now than what I first anticipated. And remember how I showed you I scored the edges? Well, the trick to this is now I'm going to score it an eighth of an inch a couple more times on each side so that my gusseted sides have plenty of room to expand because you figure there are 12, 12 of these and they each hold one photo on each one. So there's 12 pictures. Plus I have 12 of these mats. That's 24 pictures plus the extra one for Christmas. So that's 28 and you can also put one here. So you've got 36 possibly 48 pictures that are going to be housed in this too. So I want to make sure that there's enough room to really compensate for all of these in here and I think like I told you before that about putting the tie on it I think I am going to put a tie on it too and I'll put my magnets back on it rescore a little bit so my gussets are a little bit bigger and I'll be back and show you the finished project and then we'll be all done and you won't have to come back for video number two so see you in a minute everybody okay guys I've finished it up and I just want to walk through what I've done and show you each of the pages I used the regular seam binding that I use for all of my tags. That's what I sealed the book with. I have a Made uh, with Love charm that's glued to the back back here and tied with a bow. I have two um, slits that I ran the paper through to weave the ribbon through and it comes to the front and it just loops around and these are the same colors that I use for the tags. I have a stamp on the front 
and this it says you are my sunshine now remember the magnets are underneath here and when you close it it's magnetized it really doesn't need the tags but I figured when you get the rest of the pictures in it you might want them and then you open it up on the front and the back inside cover is a pocket with a tag and I um, I stayed with the blues to match the January one because that's what was there okay um, here's January and like I said this accordions out to have all 12 months so I'm going to just go through each month they each have the mat and they each have the pull out tab or, or, uh, with the um, seam binding on them and I won't pull each one out they all have the January or excuse me the uh, month everything has been backed with the craft anything that I put on it I backed it with the craft and here is February so remember you have two pictures on each one of these you have a spot for a picture underneath here this is on a swing tab on the um, Brad and then on your tags you have room for a big picture back behind. So lots and lots of room here for a whole year's worth of photos. So here's February, here's March, then if we fold it up, here's April. April has a belly band with the April on it with the three stamps where your mat slides behind. And they are all different they're geared to whatever the design was. I used one 8x8 eight eight paper pad with this and I did use a bunch of distress inks. I picked the colors that match the paper as well. I'll list these in the supply list and I also did the seam binding with those same colors. So here's April. May has a little fence across the bottom which is the Cathedral Lace Edge Punch by Martha Stewart. A couple of the butterflies that I punched with the Tim Holtz Butterfly Punch and I punched them right. They were butterflies on the paper and I just went around. I fussy cut this little guy and set him on the top of this strip and then this one just pops out so it slides underneath and underneath. That way none of your photos, when you get your photos in there, they're not all going to be falling out of the book. I just hate that. So let's do that one up. And now we have June and July. I left this one open so that you could have an extra little uh, tag in there. And this one underneath. On this one, again, I fussy cut from the paper. Let's put that back so you can see it because that's kind of busy. Fussy cut from the paper and backed it on the craft. And then your tag just slides behind your mat, your photo mat. So that's the whole, and I don't know how to get this all in here. I don't think I can. But this is January through July. And it just folds, accordion folds, and by doubling with the craft like I showed you at the very beginning, you've got a really sturdy book. Now all you do is flip it and now you have August, September. August has another swing tab here with the postcard that the mat goes under. This one now with the little calendar, I left it open at the top so you could put another little tiny tag and I put a heart um, I don't know what these are called, and I don't remember who they came from. I bought them at Joann's. Very inexpensive. Just a little heart uh, epoxy sticker, I guess is what they are. Okay, there's August and September. Here's October. And just this again, I cut the map from the, the paper, and it slides behind the October and behind the little map. Here's November. On November's, I took three of the little pieces, backed them to this brown piece of backing, the craft, put the autumn harvest across the bottom, and ran the November down the side. Isn't this just gorgeous paper? I think this is one of the prettiest calendar line paper that they've, that they've done. And here is Christmas. And like I said, because of the way the book was put together, you ended up with this double spread at Christmas time. 
And this is the one that we did together. Oh, I hope I didn't. There we go. Put it in before it was dry. This is the one that we did together. And it has the two spots for the mats here. But it only has the uh, one pull-out mat here because there was only one for Christmas. And then it folds again and you've got January. Then when it goes up like this, it is magnetized. I am going to be selling this. If anybody is interested, please send me a personal email. I will put the email link down below and we'll discuss price and shipping. So thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe today. Bye-bye, everybody. I'll have lots of still photos of all of the pages. And I'm sorry it was a long video, but I thought it was better to do it all at one time instead of two separate ones. See you uh, after Christmas. Bye.